Nic Nicola and Rupert have given you the, the kind of big picture overview um, of why this issue is important and, and some of the things that we need to tackle and that are being tackled. But I'd like to give you a more kind of local business perspective about what we've done and why we've done it and how it links into that big picture. First, a little about Sainsbury's. You have to, you have, to have this. It's obligatory. Um, that's the Sainsbury's group at a glance. We're not just um, a, a grocery retailer. Um, we've got quite a diverse portfolio. But obviously, I represent um, the fish and seafood element of our supermarket chain, where we have over 1,400 stores only in the, in the UK. We're a UK business um, with 180,000 colleagues, 27 million customer transactions per week, and a 16% market share in the grocery market. And that makes us the second largest retailer in the UK. Our company value. So our business is underpinned by five core business values. And they, they, they shape um, our everyday business activity. And those business values are embedded in our sustainability plan which has a number of targets linking to each business value and a value and, and a steering group and a management group which ensures that we are on track and delivering against those targets. So we have targets and metrics in place to measure our performance and report on our, on our performance. Our sustainability plan was launched um, in 2011 under the 20 by 20 banner where we had the same five values with 20 commitments and uh, 100 delivery goals. Uh, we then revised, refreshed, reviewed that plan in 2015 and rebranded it. And we do that periodically just to make sure that our thought processes are in line and our targets are in line with current thinking and thought leadership. And that retained the business values, they are fundamentally sound, but then we aligned ourselves with the sustainable uh, development goals, the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, because we recognise as a business that we need to play our part and we all as individuals need to play our part in delivering the big picture. And we're now at that point in time where we are reviewing as normal business process where we go after 2020 as part of normal business process. So what does this mean for fish? So back in 2020, uh, our sourcing with integrity value included fish, and we made the decision that by 2020, all the fish we sell will be independently certified as sustainable. And in 20, 2015, 2016, obviously we aligned that with SDG 14, in particular 14.4, the end overfishing IUU destruction of fishes practices. So we're aligned in every respect, recognizing that they are ambitious targets. So why did we adopt the MSC? It's a question that's often asked. Well, we believe we looked at the standards that were available, and the MSC had credibility, a governance framework, a robust government framework, was independent. But in particular, it did measure impacts. It could demonstrate improvement, and it had global applicability. Fishery sustainability in seafood is, is, is complex, and consumers understand that there are issues with this, but they don't take a deep dive, or many consumers don't take a deep dive into the issues. So we needed a, a, a vehicle where we could demonstrate responsibility and sustainability to consumers across the whole portfolio of fish and seafood, wild caught fish and seafood that we sell, and the MSC delivered that simple, credible, and robust message for us. And it delivered a platform for improvement because at the very start of this when you make a commitment you have to understand what you're selling and what the pathway is to delivery you can't just make a commitment and say yeah we'll, we'll worry about how we deliver that later so through the, the fishery improvement process the, the MSE delivered that, that platform for improvement which was important to us the MSC also delivers the available the ability for us to connect our local agenda under our sustainability plan to the global the global vision through, as I say, credible FIPS. The MSC standard is the basis for the work plan for a credible FIP. And through certification to link globally to the S SDG target. Credibility of the MSC has been underpinned by 
the GSSI um, benchmarking framework, which, other, which further added to um, the credibility and the robustness of the scheme, and we see that as a really positive development. So no presentation would be complete without a little update on how we're doing. Uh, so you see on, on the, the right here the chart uh, linking to our progress post-2011 when we made the initial commitment. Uh, we'd obviously been selling MSC certified seafood before that. But we were on a steady pathway um, to delivering our target. Currently 86% of our well-caught seafood by value is certified to the MSC standard and carries the eco-label and chain of custody. Um, and that's over £214 million worth of sales. And we have plans in place to deliver for the rest um, of our supply base. So why do we do this? Um, this, this is quite intuitive, actually. We, we are not a legal minim, minimum business. We market ourselves as a responsible business. And that responsibility is a fundamental expectation of our customers. Our, our customers um, see this as important obviously, and expect us to do the right thing. And in fact, when it comes to fish and seafood, they expect everything that we sell to be sustainable. And there's sometimes a surprise when we, by our own definition, say, everything isn't sustainable. There are things to do here. Everything isn't perfect. There's, there's work to do, but we are on that path. So we need to meet our customer needs and expectations. Obviously, we have other stakeholders' needs that we need to meet from a reputation, recognition, and regulation perspective. And that includes engagement with the NGO sector um, in respect to their needs. But there is a fundamental economic case for sustainability and doing the work that we do, and that's in securing supply of raw materials for the future. So if we invest in the sustainability agenda and work with our supply base, then we're going to have fish to sell today, tomorrow, next year, 10 years' time. So a, a sound economic rationale, but it is a balance and it's, a, it's going to be a key theme of today's discussion, I think. We're constantly, unconsciously balancing the needs of all these stakeholders as we move through time whilst constantly improving our performance. And it's the same way in terms of delivering the triple bottom line of, of sustainability, of social, environmental and economic. There is a balance to be had between all of those elements of sustainability and it changes. It's a highly dynamic environment but we've got to focus on the key outcome at the end of the day where we deliver against all of these things. And we do this in the context of a highly diverse supply chain and a global supply chain with diverse stakeholder needs within each of those countries and oceans. And again, we need to balance that with the backdrop that we are our objective is to deliver affordable quality food for our customers. And we need, to do, we need to employ that balance and deliver that balance in order to deliver that or else. If we just, if we take a very, very high view on sustainability, then we probably, in the, certainly in the very early days, would have, would have excluded 90% of our supply chain. The key thing is here that we need to work together in realistic timescales to deliver the desired outcome. And that sometimes takes compromise and certainly takes balance. So how have we done this? Well, you know, how have most businesses done this? It, it requires a fundamental business commitment to engagement, to organize it organizational engagement and dialogue. This costs a lot to have this dialogue. It just doesn't happen. If we were to give an instruction to our supply base, say, go and do this, in all chances, it wouldn't happen. We need to invest in that dialogue. And we need to be willing to have that dialogue with our competitors on a pre-competitive basis. And that was something that was quite new 10 years ago. Um, it's far more common now. But we recognized that we couldn't do this on our own. There's a lot of heavy lifting to do here, so we need to engage with our competitors on a and, and other retailers and stakeholders on a global basis to drive improvement at a global scale, and sometimes at a local scale. And I have to um, give massive credit to our supply base here. That um, our, our supply base obviously uh, thinks like us, and, set, and uh, primary suppliers in particular, who've done a huge amount of the heavy lifting in this. And also to Sustainable Fisheries Partnership, who in the early days we, we par partnered with 
to um, to ensure that we were on the right, right track, that our thought, thought processes were cons consistent with the NGO community and, and workable and achievable. And we also have engaged in, in many, many different organisations um, which have delivered global outreach and again done some of the heavy lifting, um, as have our supply base. Uh, innovation has been absolutely key. Um, and we need to engage far more in the innovation agenda and, and embrace the innovation and, and adapt to change to ensure that we deliver the improvements in a cost-effective way. Standards for us have obviously played a, an important part in this in delivering assurance on a global basis. But we need to make sure that those standards are credible and robust and have a, a, a robust framework that meet the needs of all stakeholders. And that can sometimes be controversial because sometimes things get out of balance. So this is about the future. Where do we go from here, from a business perspective and from an MSC perspective? I think that the takeaway for me is I don't believe that the model we have is broken. I think fundamentally the model is sound. I think what we need to do is we need to build on what we have. We, we need to make sure the framework is ever more robust, that if fisheries are certified, that they should be certified, whether that's through improve, you know, building peer review capacity and improve, ensuring that certification bodies uh, are consistent and robust, and that we maintain that robust framework for all stakeholders. But there has to be balance. We can't deliver the needs of all stakeholders right now all the time. We need to engage more in collaborative dialogue. We need to ensure that we uh, adapt new technologies and, and take account of new evidence and new scientific evidence in the assessment, in the certification, and in the improvement process. And at the end of the day, we need to make sure that we do this in a cost-effective manner, because we need to be cost-effective. We need to sell affordable food, and things need to be achievable for our supply chain at the end of the day. And if we do this, at the end of the day, as I say, I think the framework is in place. We will deliver against the vision, and we need to stay connected with the vision and not lose sight of that. I think sometimes we can lose sight of that and it all becomes a bit competitive. Um, but if we do work together collaboratively, collaboratively, build on the framework, we can deliver both the MSC vision, they can deliver against their vision, and deliver against SDG 14. And that would be a great place to be. Thank you.